Hello, this will be a very niche video. It will only apply to few individuals, but it may be valuable information for them. In this video, I would like to discuss majoring in a science discipline in college and the challenges faced by somebody that has a severe disability when they do decide to pick such a major. Now, before you major in a science discipline while having a severe disability, such as sleep or palsy, you should take some things into account. Majoring in a science discipline such as chemistry or biology, physics, requires one credit of lab work per course, usually. So that means that if you take, for example, general biology one and general chemistry one as your first semester freshman, you will have two three-hour labs to go to per week. Now, these two three-hour labs are grueling in themselves, but also account for the fact that you have probably anywhere from five to 10 hours of work outside of that lab to finish the lab report that is due the following week. So that could be anywhere from 10 hours of additional work or maybe 15 hours of additional work if the lab report is very complicated. Now, I understand that other classes are also four credits, as are science classes with a lab. But also, you should understand that those classes, such as calculus, that are four credits, but have no real lab, are not as intensive on your time as going to a three-hour lab and then writing up an additional lab report for that week. If you do decide to major in a science discipline and have considered the lab work portion, then that is great. But one thing that you may have missed is the not only the time commitment of the lab work itself, but also the physical demands and the safety protocols that are followed in a lab. If you have, say, a more severe form of cerebral palsy, it is entirely possible that your hands will not work like a normal person. Now, this is problematic for a few reasons. One, if your hands don't work normally, you one will not finish work in a expeditious manner. And two, you could pose a safety risk to yourself and others. Say, for example, you have a more severe startle, startle reflex, which is common in CP. If you are handling a beaker of any dangerous substance and a noise goes off and it startles you, and you drop the beaker and it shatters in glass, that is problematic. Now, 
say that you are a lucky person and you do graduate with a science degree with all those with all those odds stacked against you you would be in my case i graduated with an environmental science degree which required numerous courses with lab work now just because you graduate with a degree doesn't mean you're going to find work in that specific field. In my case, for example, it was very challenging. I found it impossible to get a job doing environmental science work. This is primarily for two reasons. One, a lot of the work required you to have a driver's license so you could operate a company vehicle. And two, a lot of the work required physical sampling of things like water and sediment. Now, in my case, doing lab work in school, I could rely on lab partners to collect samples for me. Now, that doesn't work in the work setting. That might fly in the academic setting. You could have your lab partners do most of the work, but in the real world work setting, you do your own work. You are responsible for your own work product. No one is going to help you with your own work. It is not an efficient way to handle workflow. And because of that, it is very unlikely that even if you graduate with a science degree, you will find a reliable career using that scientific knowledge you gained while in college. Again, this information is not meant to be discouraging. It is just meant to give you a fuller understanding of the challenges you may face so that you can make a more informed decision about your possible career.